In a spectacular setting of ancient tradition, merged with a dynamic and modern city, Seoul, Korea plays host to the 24th Olympic Games in 1988. One of 24 sports included in the Olympics, archery is held at the Huarang Military Academy north of the city. In an atmosphere of excitement and pageantry, colorful flags of 73 nations line the archery arena. from around the world arrive, eager to compete and win honor for their country and themselves. Equally enthusiastic supporters gather to cheer their favorite athletes. Managed by the International Archery Federation, or FIDA, archery has grown steadily as an Olympic sport since its reintroduction to Olympic competition in 1972. FIDA president Francesco Necchi Rusconi talks about the sport. The sport of archery has been growing uh, steadily in these last few years. I became president of FITA in 1977 with 58 member associations, and we now have 73. I hope that this movement will accelerate. We have started uh, promoting uh, archery in new countries. I really think this is great. Arriving eight days before the Olympics begin, the archers ready their equipment and themselves for the tough competition ahead. In daily practice, coaches and archers repeat shot after shot, seek perfection, eliminate tiny flaws of form, concentrate on mental preparedness. A seemingly static sport, archers must possess strength and stamina. Pulling 40 to 50 pound bows 360 times over five days, an archer pulls a total of eight tons during the competition. Some of the contestants express their feelings. Competition is very tough. We have both the Russians, the USA, the Japanese, the Germans, all everybody participating. But then we also try to put up a very good performance. I'm feeling natural pressure. I, I think every archer here is probably feeling pressure to some extent. Uh, I do my best. <laughs> I really do my best. Modern archery, like most highly competitive sports, now relies on space-age technology. Bow limbs are made of syntactic foam, sandwiched between layers of fiberglass and carbon fiber. Relying on an adjustable sight, archers adjust their aim for distance and to compensate for wind drift. The 1988 Olympic archery competition is very unique because of the large number of world-class and Olympic medal winners participating. USA's Daryl Pace, 76 and 84 gold medalist. Finland's Tommy Poikalainen, the 1980 gold medal winner. Japan sends 1984 bronze medal winner Hiroshi Yamamoto, 1984 silver medalist Rick McKinney, the Soviet Vladimir Ashev, 1987 world champion. One of Korea's best archers is Song Soo Park. Another strong contender is Korean In Soo Chan. From Finland comes Penty Vikström. Holland's Tini Reniers is also a tough competitor and Jay Bars, 1987 Pan Am champion. Concentration at the top levels in archery is the key to success. Actually, not just concentration, but whoever has their mind game the best that day is going to win the tournament. When you get to a top level, international level, everybody is the same as far as form and technique, pretty close. But whoever has their mental game ready is the one that's going to win the competition. Basically, it's your overall, how you look at the tournament, how you handle pressure. If your form's on that day, then you just let everything happen subconsciously. You try not to consciously think about, this is what I have to do step by step. That's what practice is for. 
to where your muscle memory works, and then you just let your subconscious shoot the arrows for you because it knows what to do. So if you can turn off your conscious mind, you'd be perfect. For me, aiming is the least important thing. All I do is look at the target and look at it through my sight and let my mind take care of that because your eye won't let you not aim. I don't think about the step-by-step -step execution, but just actually finishing the shot, coming through the shot, and everything else happens subconsciously. The archery competition begins as 62 women and 86 men step to the line. Among the archers favored to win medals is 17-year-old Korean Soon Young Kim. Another favorite is Korean Hee Kyung Wang and teammate Young Suk Young. They will be hard to beat. A strong Soviet team consists of Ludmila Archanakova and her teammates Tatiana Muntian and Natalia Budasova, the 1981 world champion. From Sweden, another 17-year-old, Jenny Siowal. Germany's Claudia Kritz is a determined competitor, as is Great Britain's Joanne Franks. In Olympic archery, the competitors shoot three arrows each time they step to the shooting line. At the sound of the horn, they have two and a half minutes to shoot the three arrows. Archery is shot at four distances, 30, 50, 60, and 70 meters for the women, and 30, 50, 70, and 90 meters for the men. On the first two days, they shoot 36 arrows at each distance for a total of 36 arrows each morning and 36 each afternoon. Over the first two days of competition, they shoot 144 arrows. Then the field is cut to the top 24 archers with the highest total scores, who proceed to the next round. On the third day, scoring starts over with everyone at zero. At the end of the morning round, the field is cut to 18 and scores start even again. On the fourth day, the field is cut to 12 for the morning round and then the afternoon finals will consist of the best eight archers. Under this scoring system, the archers who reach the semifinals and finals start each round with a zero score. This makes the competition more intense for the archers and very exciting for the spectators. Although blessed with clear weather, the archers will have to contend with variable winds. U.S. coach Sherry Rhodes comments. The winds today are a little bit tricky. They've been like swirling because we're just set down a little bit inside, uh, almost like a stadium, but we're only about halfway down. I think uh, it was nice to have today to get used to those winds because it looks like we're going to have to be dealing with them for the next five days. On the men's side of the field, 86 archers concentrate on accumulating a score high enough to allow them to make the third day cut to 24. Starting from 90 meters, the men will shoot 36 arrows at each of four distances, as the women do. At each distance, tactics change. New settings are made with their sights. A tiny miscalculation can translate into a large mistake on the target. If it's all done properly, the arrow traveling at nearly 140 miles per hour flies unerringly to the center of the target. Over four days, the archers will shoot 288 arrows, and the top shooters will put nearly 80% of their arrows in the bullseye for a score of 9 or 10. By the end of the second day, Vladimir Shev of the Soviet Union holds a one-point lead over Sung Soo Park of Korea, followed closely by Americans Jay Bars and 1984 silver medalist Rick McKinney. Now the men will be cut to the top 24, and all start even again for day three. On the opposite side of the field, the 62 women are engaged in a closely fought tournament to make the cut to 24. It has become a close race between the three Soviet archers, Great Britain, and Sweden, but holding tight to the lead are the Korean women who have trained for five years with a dedication hard for others to imagine. Accurate, strong, and extremely serious, the Koreans are out to win. But it is 17-year-old Kim who quickly dominates the competition as she amasses a 33-point lead over teammates Wang in second and Young in third. 
Kim has lived archery in the intense national team training since she was 11 years old, and her dedication shows. With the Korean women standing first, second, and third, Raoul Tuis of Belgium comments. As a member of the staff of the Belgian Olympic Committee, I was following uh, the results of the um, Korean archers in their local newspapers. And as I saw the results of training and practice, they were very high. Uh, it expected the Koreans to be at high level. The third day opens with a beautiful full moon, still visible in the clear morning air. Starting even, Arzhanakova of the Soviet Union slips past Kim by one point. The Korean women now stand second, third, and fifth. But as they start the afternoon contest, the field is cut to the top 18, and all begin at zero again. It's anyone's gold medal. By the end of the third day, Kim has regained her lead, having relinquished first place only once. Kim is seven points ahead, followed by a balanced field, including Great Britain, Sweden, Germany, USSR, Indonesia, USA, China, and Taiwan. All make the semifinals cut to 12. For the 24 men starting the third day, Reniers of Holland jumps to the lead, two points over Chun of Korea. The remainder of the favorite archers seem to falter, with Bars, Eshev, and Vikstrom in 13th, 14th, and 15th place. And Daryl Pace hangs on to 18th place and just barely makes the afternoon cut. In the afternoon, Reniers continues to do everything right and takes a solid second, just one point behind the leader. Daryl Pace leaps from 18th to 1st, seeming to regain his 1976 and 1984 Olympic gold medal form. In the morning, the field will be cut to 12 and all will start at zero. Archery is best described as a science, sport, and hobby. World-class archers shoot with incredible consistency and accuracy. No longer made entirely of wood, the bows combine a magnesium handle with carbon, fiberglass, and syntactic foam limbs. The stabilizers balance the bow, reduce torque, and absorb vibration. The sight is calibrated to allow adjustments for elevation and wind. An arm guard protects the arm from the force of the string. Arrows are either aluminum, carbon, or a combination of the two. The most recent high technology arrows are a combination of ultra thin walled high strength aluminum sheathed in high modulus carbon fiber. These arrows are very light in weight and are made thicker in the center of the shaft, the area of greatest stress. So armed, the archer is limited only by individual skill, stamina, and mental preparation. It also takes years of practice. On the morning of day four, the top 12 women step to the line. Only eight will survive for the final round of the afternoon. At this point, the women will have shot 252 arrows over a three and a half day period. On this round, Kim continues strong, eight points ahead of teammate Wang. Now the 12 are cut to eight who all start the final round with scores even at zero. It's still anybody's gold medal. For the 12 men who advance to the fourth day, it is a tight race between the US, Holland, Korea, Finland, Germany, and the Soviet Union. Shutting out all other thoughts, the archer composes each shot. The smallest imperfection can change a 10 to a 7 or worse. Each arrow holds the promise of gold.
Chun leads this round. Bars makes second with McKinney third. Park slips to fourth. Lee of Korea and Tommy Poikalainen of Finland, winner of the gold at Moscow, miss the cut as finalists, as does Daryl Pace, gold medalist from two Olympics, short by two points. It will be a long and tiring afternoon as the final eight men dig deep within themselves in their quest for Olympic fame. Weather still clear, a light and variable breeze crosses the field as the women's finals begin. At the sound of the horn, the top eight women advance to shoot. Scores again set at zero. Each arrow counts. There is no further chance to survive a questionable round. There are no further cuts, only victory or defeat. Targets are set at 30 meters, and after three ends of three arrows, the women's targets will be moved back to 50 meters, then to 60, and then to 70 meters, the most difficult distance for the final nine arrows. Soviet archer Ludmila Arsenikova scores third at 30 meters and second at 50 meters, then drops back at the longer distances. Young, second at 30 meters, falters at 50, and then quickly ties the Soviet for third place by scoring well at 60 and 70 meters. A shoot-off will be required. Teammate Wang down at the shorter distances, makes a startling recovery, pulls up to grab silver. But the standout archer at Seoul is 17-year-old Kim. Leading all but one round over the four days, Kim pulls off a brilliant last round and sets a new world record and new Olympic records for three out of four distances. Arzunikova and Yun advance to shoot off for the bronze. Arzunikova scores a seven and two nines for a 25. But Yoon bests her Soviet opponent and wins the bronze with an eight, a nine, and a perfect 10 for a total of 27 and a two point lead. For the Korean women, it's one, two, three, gold, silver, and bronze. For the rest of her life, Soon Yoon Kim, who wants to be a concert pianist, will always be an Olympic champion and a hero to the people of Korea. Now the men ready themselves as they approach the climax to their long four-day ordeal. The horn sounds the start of the men's final. But only three can win. Yamamoto falters at 70 meters. He is out of the running. Wikstrom and McKinney also slip back less than a point or two from the leaders. It's disappointing for McKinney, silver medalist in 84. At this Olympics, he had been among the top scorers each day. Reniers also falls back. Leading in the morning round, In Su Chun now finds himself in a duel for third place with Vladimir Ashev. At the opening of the 90 meter distance, Bars is first with a one point lead over Park. Now both men ready themselves. An Olympic gold medal is nine arrows away. Each has his own technique to relax himself for Olympic competition. Eshev, earlier trailing Chun by four points, improves his score by two. He misses the silver medal by one and settles for bronze, four points ahead of Chun, who drops to fourth. They have both had an outstanding tournament. Among the top five archers every day, Park must now hold firm. He must pick up at least three points to win. On the first three arrows, he ties the score with bars. On the next three, he shoots a 10 and two nines, inches ahead by one point. On his last three arrows, he shoots a seven, quickly followed by two nines. Charged with excitement, 
Barr shoots his end of three arrows in less than 40 seconds. Now on his last three arrows, he must shoot a total of 25 points to win. Has his training paid off? The mental training that I do consists of visual imagery. I will mentally shoot arrows in my head. I can see myself, I can visualize myself shooting arrows, not only from inside my body, but from outside my body, like I'm watching a videotape. You see yourself shoot perfect arrows with perfect form. I shot the Olympic final round probably a thousand times over the year before the Olympic Games in my mind. I'd be at the Olympic Games, I could hear the crowd, I could smell the field, I could feel the wind, I could smell the target butts, everything. And the more vivid you can make your mental picture, the better you are. It must be a bullseye to win. He shoots, and he does it. A perfect 10. Jay Bars wins the Olympic gold medal. It has been an extraordinary Olympics. The top five men have all set new Olympic records. And on the women's side, all but one have exceeded past Olympic records. For Jay Bars, intense physical and mental training have proven that skill and perseverance can carry the day. No longer just an individual sport, Olympic archery now includes intense team competition. On the fifth and final day, 12 national teams of women archers step up to the line. The Korean women lead at the end of the morning round with a strong showing. The U.S. team is second, with the Soviets and Indonesia fighting closely for third. In the afternoon round, the Soviets falter and slip to sixth, while Indonesia moves up to second, passing the U.S. team. The U.S. women try hard to catch the Indonesia. By mid Indonesia holds on to second and pushes hard to overtake Korea. Now, as they have over the previous four days, the Korean women stretch their lead, bullseye after bullseye, gold after gold. In the end, the Koreans prevail. The Indonesian and U.S. teams tie for second, with the Soviets missing a three-way tie by one point. After the team round is over, the Indonesian and American women advance to settle who gets silver and who goes home with bronze. Try as they may, the U.S. women cannot catch the Indonesians who take second by five points and win the silver medals. Medals for Kim as she and teammates Wang and Yun dominate women's archery at Seoul. On the men's side, 12 nations line up to determine who will be the team winners. With team members shooting nine arrows each at the same target, each of the men, like the women, will shoot 36 arrows in the morning round and 36 arrows in the afternoon. The British team, led by Howler, shoots well to gain third at 50 meters, holding off Japan and Finland. At 50 meters, the U.S. leads, with Korea only two points behind. Sparked by Bars and McKinney, the U.S. holds the lead at 70 meters, with Korea in close pursuit, while Great Britain maintains a safe third. But at 90 meters, the three Koreans put together a near-perfect performance, pull into first, led by Kim and Chun. They eclipse the U.S. team by a resounding 14 points for the gold. The young Korean women and men collect a total of seven gold medals, two silver, and one bronze, the most impressive performance in Olympic archery history. For the 1988 Olympics, the American women's team takes the bronze. Indonesia's team holds the silver. And the Korean team, led by Kim, has the gold. For the men, Great Britain wins the bronze. The U.S. team captures the silver. And the Korean men take the final gold. Young Suk Young wins the individual bronze. He Kyung Wang holds the silver. And the hero of Seoul is Soon Young Kim with individual and team gold medals. Vladimir Ashev of the Soviet Union wins bronze. Sung Soo Park wins individual silver and team gold medals. While Jay Bars wins individual gold and team silver. It has been an exciting competition and surely one of the most successful in the 96-year history of the modern Olympic Games.